Hi class, I want to talk about the uh, week three project and um, to do that we need um, statis. So, so here's week three project uh, and uh, to complete the project we need statis and that again remember we're going to use the uh, online version and uh, the whole idea of the projects are to learn how to use Statdisk, and then also we're going over, you know, material that's in statistics, and so you're learning, you know, several things at the same time. In this project for week three, and it, it, it may look like there's like a lot to do, but it, there really isn't uh, when you use, you know, a software package. It does a lot of the work for you so you just have to understand the terminology and hopefully you've gone through the um, book work first and then you learn the terms and the procedures uh, the different types of statistical techniques um, for this week and then you uh, are ready to tackle that discussion so so what we need to do here is uh, I'm going to open up and let me move this over a little bit. Okay. And so we're going to go to statist.org. And again, remember, uh, you know, only using the online uh, version of this. So you should have already had been signed up into Statdisk and put in my email address, password. And sign in. Okay. So here we have the sample editor and then up here along the top, these are, you know, the functions that Statdisk performs. And then we always start with some data. So for the week three project, uh, it says, okay, open the body data. We go in the data sets. And then it says use elementary stats 13th edition. And we'll click on that. And then and we're out of room here. Okay, I gotta move this open a little bit. Uh 13th edition body data. There we go. So we got the data in there. I'm going to squeeze this over a little bit more so I can see the whole thing. All right. Now, so it says here, uh, this file contains information on body measurement and explanation for each variable is given at the end of the file. What it means is down here, because some of the words are uh, just letters or their abbreviations of things. So just to make sure we understand what they represent, there's there's a listing down here. Okay. And it says, how many data values are in the file? So you got to look over here to file, and you see that this, uh, again, I'm going to have to move this back and forth so I can fit it all on here. But... If I look here, these are all counting, and this thing goes down, way down to 300. So age, there's 300 data values for age, but there's also 300 data values under gender, and they're showing M1 and female, and then would be zero, so it'd be like male, male, female, male, and so on. There's 300 of these, there's 300 of these, so there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you gotta count, the whole ways across how many variables there are. There's lots of variables across here. Each one has 300. 
in each column of data. So you got to then you know do the multiplication and list that. Okay. And then this is similar to uh, what you always do. Anytime you get data, you have to identify your variables that you're working with. And that's what this exercise is. Uh, so some of the variables in here are like gender. And so you should remember, you know, is that qualitative or quantitative? Is gender discrete, continuous, or neither? And what level of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? Okay. So we see this repeated throughout the course because it's very important part of uh, working with statistics. And so LDL, uh, again, is that quantitative or qualitative? It's, it's over here in the data set. Let's see, there's LDL. See, it's numeric. Low density um, lipoproteins, right, let's see. So if you want to figure out what's LDL? Oh, cholesterol milligrams per deciliter. So that's your, uh, so, you know, quantitative is that's quantitative and, you know, what and level of measurement. Again, is it discrete, continuous, or neither? And is it nominal or no interval ratio? So you got to complete this table. Uh, would you consider this data, that's all this data here, is that considered a sample or a population? Okay. And then you have to decide and, and put that in there. All right, so uh, now here's something new, you know, scatter plot. We're working with correlation and regression in uh, week uh, this week. So you have to learn, first of all, when you're working with correlation, you want to kind of visualize that relationship between those two quantitative variables. And uh, they're saying here, Create a scatter plot for the data in weight as X, okay, and body mass index as in Y. Okay, so, so we need a scatter plot. So I went to data, scatter plot, and then you'll select your variables. Now, again, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm going to just make up some variables just to show you what to do and then you know that you need to do that with these variables so again don't don't expect what i do to be exactly like what you're supposed to do that's you know your job to to do the project not not me show you how to do everything in there but i'll show you the stat disk part of it uh so so this says uh do not plot in the regression line so when i go over to scatter plot show regression lines let's like take that off so i'm going to pick uh, i'm going to make up my own variables i'm going to pick up hdl and i'm going to make up uh weight okay the weight plus cells count and scatter plot x i'm using hdl and y and it's not an input output or my horizontal and my vertical component up when i plot it and I see I get a bunch of points. See, my HDL is my horizontal component, X, and my white, that's my vertical component. So, so these points all represent ordered pairs of numbers. Each point has two numbers associated with it. It has an HDL number, and then it has a, a white cell count number with it. You got all these 300, right? you got a bunch of them, right? Okay, so that's really it for that uh, you have to do, right? And then explain a visual relationship between, you know, yours are going to be weight and BMI. So you look at, like I look at this and I say, yeah, that's, that's not very good. Uh, in fact, let me see if I can find another one. Uh, okay, didn't come out. HDL and... System. I'm trying to find ones that look a little bit better. There we go. Uh, so, you know, it says explain the relationship. Is the relationship positive or negative? So remember positive, if the points look like they're going up like this, you know, from left to right, these things are kind of, kind of going in this upward direction. That's positive correlation. 
if they were going down this way, it would be like a negative correlation. Uh, based on the scatter, how well do the points form a straight line? Well, it uh, doesn't look like a straight line to me. So not very well, right? So we talk about direction and magnitude with correlation. A correlation coefficient talks about two things. Again, which direction are the points moving, up or down? And how, and again, this is linear correlation only in this course, uh, how well these points form a straight line. So that's what that's all about. We can visually get an idea of what's going on. Uh, all right, so uh, create a scatter plot for LDO and white. So you're going to do the same thing again. So 9 and 10, uh, you do the same thing in 11 and 12, but with different variables. Okay. So I'm going to go on to correlation. Part three, correlation, it says use weight and BMI. And again, I'm going to just stick with this, what I got here. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do, uh, so systolic and diastolic. It says calculate the linear correlation. So I'm going to go up here. And I clicked on toggle sample editor because I wanted to be I wanted to see the top of the screen here. So when I go to analysis, I'm going to go to correlation and regression. And it's going to ask you for your variables. You know, the ones that you're going to do, you're going to have to put in. I'm again, I'm using, I'm going to use uh, diastolic. For my input x and systolic x. Again, I just kind of made these up here, grabbed them off of that list, and then click on evaluate. And then I get the numbers that are associated with those scatter plots of all those points. And then it says in here, paste only the correlation coefficient in the answer box. Okay. So I'm only going to look for here. Here's my correlation coefficient right here. So R equal to 0.352, right? Then 14 says, explain why the correlation coefficient correctly represents the scatter plot you created from, from or I did diastolic and systolic. So, so why does this number 0.35 correctly represent the scatter plot, which I can click right here right away and get that. So 0.35, and I look at my scatter plot with the regression line. Okay, that number of 0.35, right? That number, uh, that is positive. Well, my points are positive, so there it's representing the right direction. Now, 0.35, remember correlation runs from negative one to one. One being the highest positive, 0.35 is fairly weak, close to zero. Zero's in the middle, negative one is strong negative, positive one. So this is like, you know, like a third of the way to one and and this is kind of like, you know, not that great of a line, you know. So that means the points aren't very close to the line. That's what it's asking. How close are the points? All these scatter it of points. How close are they actually to the line? So the 0.35 represents very well. Okay. And then list the number of ordered pairs. Uh, we, you know, this, this was 300 data values. We have uh, 300 points in our sample size. Oops. There it is right there. Sample size was 300 for this one. Uh, okay, 16. Stat this. Calculate the linear correlation. You do that again for 16 and 17 for your other scatter plot when you're working with LDL and white. Okay. 
So we're getting through. We're, we're pretty much already halfway through. Um, and again, I'm going to move this over. So regression. Regression has to deal with that actual line that we saw in the scatter plot. So regression is like algebra. It's coming up with a equation of a line. That's all it is. We, we need an equation of a line. In algebra, you, you could use two points and get the equation of a line, but you can't do that in statistics because which two points would you use? you got 300 of them. Which two points are the best ones? Well, that's what we try to find the line of best fit. So what we're going to do here is look right here. We actually have it already in our output. We don't have to generate any more outputs. Paste only the regression results. So here's my regression results right here. I'm going to take those, copy and paste them right there. Okay. What is the equation of the line? Well, it's y equal to b sub 0, which is 88.95442. You can round these. So we can make that 88, 89. So it says y equal to the b sub 0. Well, we know what it is right there. It is 88.9, right? It goes right there. And then the slope b sub 1 goes right here, which is 0.48. So my regression equation, and I'm going to see if this stays up there if I write on this y equal to 88.9 uh, it was 88.9 plus 0.48x So there's my equation of the line. This is the b sub 0 goes here. So that's what we're shooting for. We're shooting to get the linear model for that regression equation, right? There's our regression equation. So we've got to get this back up there. So that's called my line of best fit. Insert the values we did that, and we showed the equation. Okay, so we got a lot. What's the slope of the line? Well, there it is, slope, right there, point four. And um, what's the y-intercept of the line? It tells you right there, 88.9. And what would you predict for the weight given a BMI of 32? Well, BMI, that's your example. In my example, basically what they're saying, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to write on here. So what they're saying is take this equation here, y equal to 88.9 plus 0.48, and then plug in 32 in there, and then see what that comes out to. So you'll multiply these two numbers, add it to this, and then you'll get a value. Okay, and that'll be your predicted value. Y is the predicted value. This is our explanatory response where you could say your input and output. You know, it's just like algebra. So for 23, it says, let's say you know the, the BMI, which again, you, you'll put your numbers into yours. Uh, I'm going to plug in 81.4 over here to this. Uh, let's see. And again, this is just like an algebra problem where I'm going to take uh, like 81.4 and put it in for Y. See, 80, whoops, 81.4 equal to 88.9 plus 0.48x. 
And if you remember in algebra, you had to subtract this first. Get that out of there. Eighty-eight. I'm just going to round that to eighty-one. And um, so when I solve this, remember you got to take and subtract this from both sides, so you get eighty-one minus. 88.9 equal to 0.48x and whatever that comes out to be, right? And then you have to divide both sides by 0.48. So you got 81 minus 88.9 divided by 0.48. And then you solve for x. So the first one we solve for y, second one we solve for x. Okay. Let me get this back over here. And all right. And oh, say let's. Okay, so that and there's only one more thing. Let's see for this part uh, using the output what's the coefficient of determination so let's look over here here's my coefficient of determination 0 0.12405 so like 0.12 you can just put that there and it says this is does this indicate a good you know a good predictor model why all right 0 0.12 is no it's not a good predictor because again, zero would be awful, and one is the highest you could get. So 0.12 is kind of close to zero. That's not good at all. Now, if I had a coefficient of determination like 0.7, then yes, that would be very good. Okay. So that one, no. All right. So now let's look at the last part. And this is similar to what we had just done except multiple regression, you can have more than one input into your equation. And multiple regression means there's typically, you know, more than one. So this says, what if you wanted to use height and waist to predict weight? So height, right, height in centimeters, waist, circumference size, use the sample data and perform, right? So um, what I have to do is come up here to analysis, go to multiple regression. And again, we just have a few problems here to finish up, we're almost there. So we're going to, again, I'm gonna make these I'm up. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna say uh, systolic, diastolic and um pulse all right i'm gonna use pulse so i have to pick my i gotta select the three variables that are given like in here uh it gives you height waist and weight so you'll have to select those all three over here then say which is the dependent variable and it tells you here it tells you uh yeah, select weight as your dependent variable, okay, for yours. I'm going to pick uh, my systolic pressure as my dependent. Again, I just made it up. So then I'll hit evaluate, and I got my numbers. And you see I have this B sub 0, B sub 1, and B sub 3, okay. And again, it's... You know, hard to explain why there's no B sub 1 and B sub 2 there, but just use what they have here, that's all. This B sub 0 is going to be your intercept, like it was before. This is the Y intercept. And then these are your two so called X, you know, coefficients. And so this number and this number and this number are all going to be used in your. Uh, equation. 
So I'm going to pull this over again and clear this off for a minute. And then I'm going to show you uh, what I got here. I'll bring it over in just a minute. But what we're doing is, you know, y equal to, and then we have that, you know, b sub 0 plus x sub 1. Uh, b sub 1, x sub 1, plus b sub 3, x sub 3. And that, this may be 2 on yours, maybe 2 and 3. So just kind of be careful on where you put them. But we're going to put y equal to. And I'm putting in, and I'm rounding. I'm just going to do 104 plus negative 0.24 x sub 1 plus 0.5 x sub 3. All right, so hang on, hang on. Show you where I got this at. But your equation is going to kind of look just almost exactly like this. And here's where I got the numbers. B sub 0, right there, 104. The negative 0.24 came from right there, B sub 1. And then the 0.5, which is right there, went in there. So now I have my multiple regression equation, okay, which is typically what you see. When you see regression, uh, this is a linear multiple regression equation, okay. So um, this is the ones that you would see mostly out there that people wanted to have many inputs to try to predict something. It's usually not just one independent, one dependent. That's very rarely uh, something that you would, you know, run into. But uh, so then uh, let's go. Okay, so we got the equation. It says use the equation here. We're going to use this equation right here. When height is 175, You'd put that in here for x, and then waste to 74 in yours. And again, I, I would, you know, this isn't my data for me, but you can put your one number in here for this x, you know, another other number in here for this x, and you got to, you know, use a calculator to figure it out, and that'll be your prediction. And then the very last thing, uh, multiple regression has an r squared value also. Again, coefficient of determination, right? Here's my R squared, 0.157. Is it a good predictor? Well, this one isn't. Look, look, it's close to zero. One's the best. This is not also not going to be, you know, a good predictor. So, and then, then you're done. Okay, so uh, if you follow along, again, I think that... Uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, get through that. If you have any questions, you'd always email. And uh, but make sure you watch, you know, the video first and you know, work through the example. Okay.